Hello everybody, good day to you and welcome back. This is gonna be a very special episode in my opinion. We are about to settle a debate that has been occurring amongst the automotive community for generations and generations. Do we or do we not grease the slides on our caliper brackets? This is gonna be the part three video of a 2000 Chevrolet Silverado 1500 two-wheel drive. This particular truck comes to us from the faraway land of Canada. She has approximately, looks like 288,992 kilometers on the odometer. Power down. In the previous episodes on this particular truck, we visited some air conditioning issues. We had a seized up belt tensioner. We had a misfire under all conditions. It was a random. I think the thing had a trouble code P0300 stored in history. Uh, last episode, we changed the spark plugs and some wires. We had found that the original plugs had worn to a gap of 70 to 80 thousandths of an inch in certain circumstances. And I believe spec was 44 thou. We are putting considerable effort into this vintage pickup truck and we would like to make it last throughout the years. Now, one thing I've noticed on this truck, we can see here, it's got a lot of replacement steering and suspension components. I took note of several replacement suspension components on this truck when we first did the inspection. We can see here, there are some new bushings on these replacement upper control arms. The lower control arms have also been replaced and as well as uh, the tie rods, at least the outers anyway. I, I believe the steering rack has been replaced at one point but we can also see that the outers also have been serviced. And I know that because we have the presence of all these grease fittings. Now, from what I can tell, these fittings are dry and they have not been greased in quite some time. So I'm gonna start this video off with re-greasing this front end and we're gonna pull some of these things apart like these brake components. We're gonna try to decrustify some of this rust and build up and we'll see what else we can find along the way. So stay tuned because this is gonna be a very good video. Opening Z hood. Let's circumnavigate the lift here and move on up to a more comfortable ride height. One more. On the locks. Good. Let us begin decrustifying our suspension. We're gonna need some air hose for this one. Alright, let's blow gun some of this dirt and whatnot out of here. Loud noises. Clean off these grease uh, things everywhere. Ah! Rust got me. It's like a pocket of frame rust. Look at that in there. Ooh, that's nasty. I'll wipe off the fitting here for a. Uh, that other side, or for the uh, tie rod, rather. Ooh, that's not looking good. I think the backing plate's rusted out also. Oh no. All right, let's find out. Turn this thing and pull the, uh, pull the brakes off. Here, let's get, uh, let's get this axle turned some. I'm gonna pull these rotors off and take a look at that backing plate in there. All right, we're looking for an 18 millimeter. Let's pull these slide pin bolts out. On the clickage. And it said nope. Uh -huh. Dang, look at that. That's a lot of grease. Times two. Okay. Like I said, it's been well maintained. And we'll take a pry driver here and just get under this caliper from the bottom. We can work this thing up and away from the pads here. Come on out, caliper. Ooh, that does not want to uh, to let go. So here, check it out. I'll pry against the veins on the rotor a little bit to compress the pistons. There we go. Come try it out. Let's pull these pads off here. Ooh, what is this? was on there. Okay, take a look in here. I want to show you guys something. 
Do you see all of this buildup right here on the slide pin? You guys see all that? That is grease from the last time that a brake job was done. See all that grease right there? Well, you can see that's not liquid. It's more of just like a, like a hardened paste almost. This is my issue with lubricating slides on your caliper brackets. And we can even see it right here on this one where the pad has been trying to move around and it's collecting that grease and it's packing it in and jacking it between the caliper and the pad. You see all that right there, all that buildup? That means this pad is not gonna wanna come out of there. Look at that. It does not move freely. <sighs> yeah, see that? That thing is jacked in. That's why they call it rust jacking, but this is grease jacking. What'll happen is all of uh, all the brake dust from as these pads wears and any other dirt and uh, debris that's floating around will get collected on that grease just like this and it migrates and makes its way in and gets smashed between the pad and the bracket and then your brakes stick flashlight flashlight down all right check this out so let me pull stay <laughs> stay up there let's pry this other one out real quick It's not horrible, That's, that one's making good contact. So let's check out the one around here on the back side. Take a look at this right here. See all that rust? You see how the pads are only making contact with less than half of the rotor surface? Do you see that? Right here we've got the smooth part where it's definitely making contact, but then over here, it's all rusted and pitted. And those grooves in there are deep too, look at that. See all those pits? It's all just rust. That's from the pad not making contact with the back side of the rotor. And that happens because of that jacking phenomenon where you get this debris and this grease in between the pad and its slide. Now, to further my case against lubricating these, well, I'll point out number one, when they come from the manufacturer, these are in their dry. There is no lubrication here when these come, when they're built, when they're brand new. Never has been, I've never actually seen it. I'm sure there's that one-off oddball scenario that uh, it does occur, but I have not seen it. But we can take a look right here. That is exposed. There is no grease, there's no lubricant whatsoever on this part of the slide, yet it's not rusted out. Now, granted, I realize that's probably not the original and this has been replaced before, but regardless, we see zero corrosion and zero rust on, uh, on either of these. I mean, maybe a little bit of surface patina, but there's nothing here that's gonna cause any kind of interference between the pads and the caliper bracket. So I am of the opinion that these metal slides and shims should not be lubricated when installing brake pads. Ah, now look at here. Somebody has placed Never Seize in there to uh, prevent that from rusting. I can get down with that. Like I see, I think that's okay because that's not going to collect any dirt and debris because it's all been encased by, uh, by that, uh, that other slide, that metal piece. So there's very little to none or to no exposure to the elements on this section. So I can understand some, uh, some never sees, especially in a salty environment, but I, I still do not agree with the grease that actually goes on the actual slides because we saw what happens. All right, caliper brackets coming off next. A little impact it. Nope. Can't do it. So I'll use a bigger one. That worked. Oh, it doesn't fit. It's too big. Got her. Here, let's pull this rotor. What was it? Oh, the brake clean? That's the good stuff, yeah. Red can. Aaron's raiding my brake clean closet. Yeah, check that out. What has happened here, we'll hang this back up so I don't have to hold on to it. What has happened here is since these pads were being hung up on the slides on the caliper bracket, as the pistons pressed on the pads to create friction, it was binding some. So the pad would press in on the inside, but it would get stuck here on the outside. And so we were getting an uneven contact patch between the pad and the rotor. So this pad was wearing sideways and only rubbing 
on 40, 45% of the rotor surface when it was missing out on all the rest of it over there because it was getting grease jacked with all that extra grease in there causing that stuff to stick and thus ruining the, uh, the brake rotor prematurely. All right, let's get rid of this thing because we're not using it again. We can see here, look at that. We have a uh, fairly newish hub bearing. I want to put some eyes on this backing plate over here. It's uh, it's seen better days. Look at that. Yeah, that's what I was worried about earlier. This thing's totally coming apart. Yep, it's broken off right inside of here. Look at that. There's nothing left of that backing plate. It's only being held on by half of this section up here. And I bet two or three more wiggles and it's going to break. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to order some backing plates for this too. We're going to put backing plates in it. Yep. -er. So we're moving on, going a little deeper. I need, looks like 15 millimeter fasteners. We've got three of them on the back side of this, uh, this hub. And this thing is also loaded full of never sees. So somebody was thinking about me, the next guy. All right, here, let's get this turned again so we could reach it from the back side. Again, it's a 15 and a 15. I'm gonna take a, uh, a long handle wrench and break those loose and then we can finish them off with the electron ratchet. So, let's see, I don't wanna use my, uh, my ratcheting wrenches because then I could possibly damage them. We'll use the straight wrench. I don't wanna break the ratcheting mechanism because sometimes these can be super, super tight. Here, what I'll do is I'll get under it, both arms, and I'll use my weight. Break it loose. There we go. Second one. And numero tres. There we go. All right, they're all loose now. Good. All right, sneaking around to the back side. The electron ratchet, neutral drop these fasteners all the way out. Aha. Got him. So I don't want to abuse these hubs too much trying to get them out. I have a feeling they will come out with ease, but I'm not gonna bash on them with a hammer. We're just gonna try to run them out with this mallet right here. It's either gonna work or it's not. I may need to, yeah, I'm gonna have to up the levels of aggression ever so slightly. Bigger hammer. Tap it on out from the backside. I'm giving some slight pressure away with my hand here. There we go. Got her. Okay, so we do have a little bit of crusty stuff to contend with on this. Not much. A wire brush will handle that no problem. Let's go ahead and clean up this face right here and get rid of all that uh, excess nasty. Polish this rust off of here and uh, well, I guess we can start to disassemble the other side because I'm waiting on the backing plates to arrive. All right, let's get in there nice and deep like and decrustify this situation here. So I went ahead and pulled out a wire wheel because I figured that's the best tool to get the inner bore of, uh, of this hub surface clean right here. So let me dig that ABS wire out so I don't uh, scratch it up. Full send. There we go. We'll knock the rest of the dust off this front surface. I said dust, I meant rust. Well, it's rusty dust. There, much more better. More rust. Good. All right, let's just get a little bit of never sees 
or anti seas and anti never seas. We'll just get a little bit of this right here on this front face. And this thing will be ready for uh, the new backing plate when it arrives and ready for the bearing. All right, let's move on over, circumnavigate the Silverado and start in on our other side. We got okay, we're looking at the same MO as the other side here. Let's get this wheel turned over, flipped around. We'll clean it off, blow everything out, get all the dirt off the cert fittings for future greasings. Then we'll pull this uh, hub and this rotor as well. I do believe that the backing plate yeah, that's just as crustomatic as the other one. Look at that. It's gonna fall right out. All right, let's grab the gun and get this thing disconnected, removed. Let's see how greased up these pins are. Slippage. A good one. Mm-hmm. Well lubricated shaft. Times two, stick you guys over here. Let's go ahead and get this caliper out of here. Give it some wiggles. Back to the pry driver. Now let's open up those pistons some. A little bit of pressure. Caliper is free. And we've got the exact same situation going on here with these slide pins. Check this out. They're loaded full of grease. That grease has collected all this dust and dirt and rust, and it's causing these pads to stick. Look at that. See how tight the fitment was in there? It just peeled the grease right off of it. Okay. Yep, look at here. On the inboard side of the pad, we can see our contact patch, and then we can see right here where it's all pitted and it's sort of discolored. I can't feel a difference in wear but we're not making contact up here at this top side. No bueno. Let's pop this one out. Get rid of that. And our other one up top, pop you out. Same situation, got a bunch of never sees in here, which is good. It prevented rusting and damage from this caliper bracket. Big black coming in. Oh no, it doesn't fit. Swivel coming in. Need to get a better angle for the dangle here. Got it. All right, let's get out of here and we'll pull this rotor. See what we're looking like behind it. And we have another brand new hub. Good hub face right here, loaded with never sees and horrible, horrible contact patch on our brake pads. No bueno. 15 straight wrench again. Now, here's the deal with this one. I can't hang down on it unless I try it from that side over there. But if I try to pull on this wrench from over there, it's just gonna run into the tie rods. So we're just gonna kind of stance ourselves here, double hand it, kind of like we're golfing. Just give it a straight arm pull. There we go. go. Like the grease. There we go. Got that one. Ratchet wrench coming in. A Rod's making a lot of noise with a Mustang. Say hi. Hey. We've got bearded Ford Tech, Viking Mechanic, Ford Viking Mechanic, and Power Stroke Tech Talk with A Rod. That's the one and only A Rod. They're here for the week. I was Ronry without them. I'm so Ronry. Linear impact driver coming in. Let's knock this bearing out. And make sure our uh, knuckle's good. Just tap it on out. Mm 
misfire. Got it. Okay, we're looking at a kind of a similar level of crustomatic action going on here. Nothing crazy because somebody threw a bunch of never sees in it. Let's clean this thing out too. And I think we're we're probably gonna be on like a standstill or a parts hold when this is done. Because I don't have my backing plates and I cannot reassemble anything without them. Pity. Got away from me there. There we go. Yeah, we're digging in nice. Clean up all that crusty. Goodbye, Canadian contamination. All right, guys, as you can see here, there's no additional damages. There is a bit of rust pitting and some flaking and whatnot, but I think this is gonna be okay. So unfortunately, I have really nothing more to do on this particular truck until I get some backing plates. When I get my backing plates, we can uh, continue with the reassembly of these brake system components. I'll be sure to get this thing greased up and lubricated. That way it's ready for another winter up in Canada. But uh, so guys, having said all that again, and as always, thank you for watching. Certainly hope you enjoyed this video. If in fact you did enjoy this video, please feel free to let me know about that in the comment section down below. Do not forget to tap that like button while you're down there. And most importantly, have yourselves a fantastic day. See you guys later in a Silverado, in a video, end of Canadian brake job, end of crusty contamination, end of transmission. I got you guys, I was totally kidding. I would never, ever, ever do something like this permanently. It was just for the never sees joke. No worries. I'm going to clean it off. It does kind of look cool.